So, we mention this here because prior to this time, the science of Tajweed was connected to other sciences, the sciences of Sarf, the science of Qira'a and Tafsir. Then during this time frame, it separated and became a study on its own, not directly connected to a study in those other fields. That's what we want to understand here. Memorizing someone's name exactly is of no benefit. You know, we just drop in names and people aren't going to know who those people are anyway. Right? So there's no real benefit that you have to give a biography about that. And then it, no, it's simple enough to understand that during from 118 to 229, Hijra, Tejweed took off on its own and separated from those other sciences. You understand that, young man? Okay. In order to study Tejweed, what, now we said what tools must we use. Now we're going to deal with the tools. Does everybody understand when I say what tools we, we need? Right? What tools? does a tailor use? He uses a sewing machine. He uses a needle and a thread. He uses a string measure, right? And he measures twice and he uses scissors. Those are his tools. If you want to be a tailor, you better get used to those tools before you get to the cloth. You have to know how to use the scissors first. You have to know how to eye that needle. If a, a carpenter, he has to get that hammer in his hand and that screwdriver and everything, get his pants, his jeans on and over, everything. So, for Tejweed, you're going to use certain things. In order to study Tejweed, one needs to have some knowledge of Qira'a. Now everybody says, well, I don't have any knowledge of Qira'a. You do. You do by doing it. You've been doing it your whole life. You've been doing it your whole life as a Muslim. That there are certain things that you've picked up even though you don't know the name of those things. In the study of Tajweed, we'll break it down and show you what that actually is. You see what I'm talking about? So, that's one thing. Anatomy. One says, hey, I'm not taking a medical course. Why do I need to know anatomy? You do. You do, do need to know certain things. The upper part of your mouth, the, the, the bottom of your throat, you know, the, 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 the grinders and the sharp teeth. And I'm just being very basic. These things you're going to need to know. Everybody, and everybody will know these things. It's not that you have to get technical and know all these technical terms, but you're going to have to become more familiar with the workings of your mouth and your nose when you hold air in your nose, okay? And how you put your, your lips together and how you don't put them together, but you put them close. These things are covered under anatomy. And whenever you see in the books of Tajweed, they have pictures Diagrams, like it's a medical school, of the whole mouth going down the throat, right? So there's familiarity in those things. Then Arabic. If you can't read, some people in Mauritania, people who learn how to recite the Quran from beginning to end, they never know how to read. But are they experts in Tajweed? No. They can't tell you, or not the, some of them, some of them can. Some people, they can't tell you what the rule is, but they just know this is how we recite it. Is that having knowledge of Tajweed? To a certain degree, yes. That's taqlid. You, you, know, you know it and you go up. But you can't explain it. You can just do it. And you can hear it and say it's done this way. That's one level of knowledge. That's not what we do nowadays, especially not in America. Show me. I need to read it for myself so I can become confirmed and more confident in this whole issue. So if you don't know how to read Arabic, it's going to be a very difficult thing for you to learn Tajweed here. Okay, all those transliterations that we've had for the last 20 years, 30 years, they've done no good to us. They've done a lot of harm. I mean, initially people said, I'm going to start off with this transliteration, you know, the books with the writing and Arabic. And, and then 20, 30 years later, they're still using that. It's a crutch. Now it's made the leg so small you can't stand on it. You understand? So we leave those along and we struggle. Our problem is this pride, this arrogance, that we don't want anyone to hear us making mistakes. We don't want anybody to hear our voice cracking and doing these types of things. Or we don't want everybody to see how little we know. So we don't go anywhere. And this has been holding us up so much so that now we're, we're losing the respect of our youth. Okay? So we got to get past that. And it's not hard to get past that. It just takes some consistency. A couple of weeks couple of weeks of consistency and we'll be through this going on to the next stage inshallah and again like with anything the more you do it the better you become at it the rules of tajweed don't change 
<laughs> okay? So once we learn them, we, we can keep practicing the same rules over and over again. You read the Quran every day. You hear it all the time. At least now you know what you'll be listening to. Okay? And when you're listening to good recitation and when you're listening to mistakes. Okay? Because the point with Tajweed is to make you uncomfortable with the mistakes. So then, in order to study Tajweed, one needs to have, one, have some knowledge of Qira'a, anatomy, and Arabic. Some of the utensils used in teaching Tajweed nowadays include listening to CD, CDs of classical Qadis reciting so the student gets accustomed to hearing the proper way of reciting. Okay, nowadays it's much easier to learn Tajweed because it used to be we would wait in the masjid for the sheikh to come or the ustaz to come, and between him going shopping for his family or going to go do some work, we try to get a lesson in, okay? Nowadays, we don't got to wait for him. We got the CD, okay? <laughs> and we sit down and we plug it in and we listen to it a hundred times all day, all day, so that when he comes, we can recite it. We may not do it perfect, but we've gotten accustomed to what we have to say and how it has to go, even following the rhythm and the rhyme of the recitation of the Qur'an, and now he can come and with a little bit of time, straighten it out for us. And then when he's gone, we can still now, with his straightening out, listen again with a newer ear to how it's supposed to be done. It only works though if you open your mouth and recite while you're listening. Turn it down a little bit and you ra and raise your voice up with it and recite with it. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alhamdulillah. And this will help you in your recitation. Blasting it loud sometimes doesn't help you recite with it, but you turn it down so you can recite along with it, and that is what's going to help you in your recitation of the Quran, insha'Allah. What, is, what issues does it deal with? Tajweed deals with issues like idhar and idgham, terms that we'll learn about through study. I don't want to define them here, okay? When we talk about what the issues that it deals with, it deals with issues tied to the letters. Idhar is a type of letter. It's a letter that when you hear it, you recite it clearly. Okay? Idram is dakhala shay fi shay. It's to enter something on something else. But we won't understand the reality of that until we get to the letters. But these are some of the things that the issues that it deals with. It deals with these issues of the letters. So we'll learn about that later. It deals with things like Abdi Hajjaka wa Khaffa Aqima. These are the letters of Alamu Qamariya. So this type of thing we're talking about here, we'll have to deal with it as we get to it. These are letters, abghi, hajjak, alif, mbat, jim, hat, ghayn, jim, kaf. These are letters of qamariya. What that actually means, we'll have to learn through study. Okay, but that's what it deals with. These are rules of tajweed. How to recite those individual letters. Next, what is the legal ruling regarding studying tajweed? This is very important. Okay? It says the legal ruling concerning studying Tajweed is that it is Fard Kifaya. What does that mean? Fard Kifaya here means that it is not an obligation on everyone to study wa rahmatullah. To study the science of Tajweed. Meaning that everybody doesn't have to become an expert at teaching and being you know, a scholar in Tajweed. However, this is a tricky statement. Anyone who opens his mouth to recite Qur'an has to recite with Tajweed. Reciting the Qur'an with Tajweed is wajib. Is an obl obligation on anyone who opens his mouth to recite it. Why? Because that's how Allah revealed it. That's how Allah revealed it, so you have to recite it the way it was revealed. So whoever endeavors to recite anything out of the Qur'an, even one word, has to recite it with tajweed. Otherwise, are you playing with the Qur'an? Are you playing with the speech of Allah? Did Allah say it like that? Or did Allah send his messengers down to say it like what? The way it was taught. The way it was sent down. So we have to recite the Qur'an the way it was revealed. Why? Because it's the speech of Allah and it's not created because Allah sent it down in a certain way and we have to recite it in that particular way. This, walhamdulillah. Do I have any questions?